Baba Jan Land is a theme park located northeast of Brussels, kind of close to the Dutch border, home to eight different roller coasters and a variety of family attractions. The park is owned by Parques Renudos, the same company that owns like Movie Park Germany, Park Warner Madrid, Mirabilandia, and Tussenfried. As of the past couple of years, they've gained a lot more attention due to their newest roller coaster, Fury. It's a Gerslauer Infinity Coaster with a pretty cool feature being that you can choose which direction you launch, forwards or backwards. There's already a full separate review on this channel of that attraction. Please go check it out if you want to hear about that. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the park itself, some of the different things that you can expect, my overall impressions, and what I recommend. Now, I have only been to this park once and it was not for the full day. I'd been advised by several people who had been there before that this was not a full day park. And after experiencing it for myself, I agree with that statement. Although I do wish I had a little bit more time here. Maybe even just like an extra hour or two would have helped. There were a couple attractions I missed that I would have liked to have experienced, but for the most part, I did get a pretty good feel of it. Overall, the park was bigger than I was expecting. They actually own a pretty decent amount of land. Like I have faith that whenever they decide to add in another new roller coaster, another big ride, that they will have no shortage of land to choose from. For the most part, the park is centered around this big lake with the attractions sprinkled around it. There's four different themed areas around this park, and I say themed almost within quotations because it's very light theming. Like I would say Bobby on Lund is more so an amusement park than a theme park. You'll get some theming with individual attractions, but it definitely varies. But those four themed areas are Cowboy Town, Land of Legends, their Children's Land, and Adventure Valley. Now, only two of these areas are really home to like big thrill rides, that being Land of Legends and Adventure Valley. Land of Legends has Fury, Sledgehammer, which is their Frisbee. That's like the main flat ride here. There's not really much else aside from that. And then Typhoon, a Gerslauer Eurofighter, one of the first ever built, and it definitely rides like that. And then Adventure Valley has Revolution, their Mauer Spinner, this crazy King Kong ride that unfortunately was closed that I was really sad about because it looks awesome. I thought the best themed area was Cowboy Town. It's an area of the park I wish I got to walk around a bit more. We kind of breeze past this area so we could move on to another section. And I know I always like make fun of European theme parks for always having a Western area, but this one actually makes sense. The guy who founded this place was a folk and country singer. So part of the park was inspired from that genre of music. So that's where some of the buildings come from. Even after you walk in, you have this big plaza, really nice and open. And this building has this kind of Western Spanish architecture style. The main gift shop right at the front of the park is called the General Store. So you can see hints of that throughout. When we first arrived at Bobby Land, I did think it was not the greatest impression. It's a very small kind of lackluster entrance. It is not memorable at all. The park is located like right off of this street, which is a little strange because one of the main parking lots you might go to is on the other side of the road. We parked pretty close, but thought it was kind of strange that this was the entrance to like an amusement park. For one, you couldn't really see any of the rides, which is fine. I mean, th hey, that's much more of a discovery experience. Like you'll see them when you get there sort of thing. That's fine. As much as I hate to say, I feel like that kind of lackluster entrance did carry through with some areas of this park. Like, don't get me wrong, Bobby on Lund is nice looking, but I wouldn't really call it beautiful. Like the park isn't ugly by any means, but just overall, it's just fine. Like it's nothing to shout at. I didn't feel like looks were one of the main draws, like how it would be at places like Efteling or Fantasia Land. When you exit those parks, you have like an image in your mind of one of the specific areas that like stood out to you. And you don't really get that here. One thing though, I did appreciate with Bobby on Land, there's a decent amount of trees here. So as a result of that, there's plenty of pathways that were very well shaded which I really appreciate because we went on a hot day. We took advantage of that. The entire park though is not like that. There are plenty of pathways that definitely could use some shade, which is why these misters right here came in handy. It was moments like that when you're just walking around waiting until the next attraction comes up because sometimes there's a pretty big gap between rides. It's why I say I hope they continue to invest in this place and put in new attractions because they have plenty of space to work with. One of the first things I noticed when we entered Bobby Online that immediately I thought was strange was they have Nickelodeon characters here, but not a Nickelodeon themed land, which I thought was a little strange. Usually the two go hand in hand. So let's go through some of these rides. The first big one you'll see is Typhoon. It's definitely an eye-catching roller coaster, but not the most comfortable experience. It's pretty shaky, but the first loop pulls a ton of G-forces. I had a pretty hardcore gray out. 
But it's a weird layout, definitely a headbanger. It was also the longest line we saw throughout the day. It was at this point that we started to wonder, should we be getting fast passes? And so we did some digging and I just wanna go through this. This system is pretty interesting. They have a virtual queue set up. For 15 euros, you get access to the site where you can make queue times and come back to ride so you don't have to wait in the standby queue. Like it's freaking Genie Plus at Disney. They even have one time skip the lines you can get for five euros. So if there's just one line that's really bad, you can do it. That's really like light lane but they also have different tiers like this one right here you only cut the wait times in half but then when you pay a little bit more you cut out the wait times almost completely this one right here you can use once at each ride and then this one you can use them unlimited in the end we decided not to do it but looking back on it i think some of those one-time use speedy pass entrances would have saved us a little bit the only other really bad line we saw was for their suspended coaster just because they had one train and fairly slow operations so unfortunately we did not get on that one which would have been cool there's only a couple of vacoma suspended coasters out there in the world but that's okay i mean I'm sure I'll be back here at some point. But they do have some decent family coasters. There's a cute one called Okie Dokie, which goes over the park pathway. This mine train called Bob Express is pretty long, and it went around twice. It was a cool layout. Just had a couple janky spots here and there, but I enjoyed it. Their standout roller coaster is Revolution, and this is a weird one. It has the longest train on any roller coaster in the world. You sit on it bobsled style. It travels up this very wide spiral lift hill and then spirals back down through some lights. If it was an outdoor coaster, it'd probably suck, but the park made the, this big thematic experience, and it's so weird. Totally funky lighting, weird projected images on the ceiling and audio during this whole experience. It really added to it and made it like immersive. You could absolutely make an argument for it being the best roller coaster there. Indiana River is the park's log flume completely indoors. It's actually since closed down because they're re-theming it. But as of when I wrote it, it looked like Rainforest Cafe in there. Very well themed, three different drops, and you get decently wet. I did think the ride was a little strange though because I do not remember seeing any rainforest in Indiana the last time I went. But hey, whatever. Also, right next to that attraction is a literal beach. Like sand everywhere. There's this play structure that all the kids can hang out on. There's a fence so you can't go into the water. But I thought that was awesome and totally random. And of course, with it being next to Indiana River, that does make this Indiana Beach. And last ride I'll mention is the park's dark ride. And this is a ride that I didn't even know existed when I was there. And so, unfortunately, I did miss it. Definitely would have loved to experience that one. But overall, my impressions with Bubby on Lon's rides is that so many of these attractions are kind of novelty. Like they're very unique. They have like this odd quirk or spin on them that makes them stand out. But all that being said, I feel like nothing here really wowed me. They're just missing that standout coaster. I genuinely feel like they need something with airtime. I don't see them getting a b and I feel like that's outside of this park's budget and they don't really need a ride with that kind of capacity. But even a Vacoma Thrill Coaster like Phonix would work well. So we'll have to wait and see if they do something like that in the future. Overall though, I thought Bobby Online was pretty fun. There was more to do in this park than I originally expected. But I think if you have to prioritize, I would definitely do the other parks in Belgium and the Netherlands before you do Bobby on Land. I hate calling this park forgettable, but we did so many parks in Europe and so many of them had standout moments that I feel like Bobby on Land was just lacking. So while I had fun, I would not call this park a must do. But hey, those are just my thoughts. I want to hear from you guys down in the comments below. If you've been to Bobby on Lund, if you agree with the points that I've brought up, if you think there's anything I missed, please post it down below. And if you're new to the channel, I hope that you check out some of the other park reviews we've done from places all across the world. They're located in a playlist in alphabetical order by the park's name. So thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time.